So this is a Trinity Works power stacker, I think it's called, or uh, it's equivalent to a PNY quick chip. And what it is, is a 486 CPU upgrade that will give your 486 or slot 3, or no, socket 3 motherboard an AM5X86 PR75. And that, uh, that model number indicates that it has the speed of a Pentium 75. However, there are a couple... Um, things about that that won't make it fast or as fast as a Pentium 75 depending on your your computer obviously so this video could turn out to be one of two things either i'll be able to get this working on this computer which i've already tried once and didn't really show very promising results because it just kind of hung after posting but i'm thinking it just has a fit with the hard drive for whatever reason i tried another uh, io card for the hard drive and um, <clears throat> that didn't work out so well either, so maybe I'm just going to disconnect the hard drive and see if I can get it to boot from floppy disks, and if I can do that, then I'll probably just put another hard drive in there, and I'll have a very fast 486. If not, I will put it in my compact, and this will be a video about why not all CPU upgrades are for all 486s, because it's very disappointing when you run this CPU in that computer. So as I open up the top of this case for my AT&T 486, a screw fell out. And apparently, I did not put the screw back in from when I first tried to uh, change the I.O. card. So anyway, to install this CPU, all you gotta do, well in the case of this, CP uh, this computer already, this has a DX266 in there, so that has a front side bus speed of 33 megahertz, which is exactly what... Uh, the uh, power stacker there needs. So let's just get a uh, screwdriver to open that up. So I don't need to change any jumper settings or anything. All I gotta do is take this out and plop the... Whoa! You know, I'd like to take the CPU out with that, please. Just need to pop the new CPU in there and it should be good. However, as I said, it already had some issues. This CPU does have an 169th pin, but... Um, Unlike the overdrive processors, this will not work in a computer that has a soldered on CPU like my AS2. So this will be easy to install because it's physically keyed. There. Voila. I also forgot to mention that this CPU actually does have voltage regulators built into it, so this will work in a 5 volt or five volt socket only, such as my 486 right here. It does not support 3.3 volt CPUs, but since this CPU converts it for you, so sort of like a overdrive DX4s, it should work, but it kind of doesn't. So now I have the computer set up in a very minimal configuration here. I only have the keyboard and the monitor hooked up. So then we're going to or hooked up and we're going to see what it does. It says it's 100 megahertz, but I'm pretty sure I have the dip switches on the bottom of the CPU set to 133 like it's supposed to. Anyway, as you can see, it gets stuck right here. And while it's stuck, the hard drive light is stuck on. However, it is accessing the uh, floppy disk drive is started. Whoa, what the heck? Is it starting MS-DOS right now? No, um, actually it's not. So the hard drive light's stuck on. The A drive light is stuck on. It actually got to try to boot DOS this time, but it got stuck. So there's something that it's very unhappy about. It's something to do with the drives, I think. It's not accessing the I.O. properly. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, an issue with my card or if it's an issue with my drives. We could also just remove all the drives and see what happens. Unfortunately, it still gets stuck right here. So I think that this CPU just straight up does not like this computer at all. It should give a no boot device or some sort of error like that if it doesn't have anything. We could uh, also unplug the floppy disk cable here and see what happens. And it just gets stuck. Let's see what happens when none of the drives are hooked up with a regular 486DX inside the computer. So with nothing hooked up, um, it should do this after it throws the floppy disk fail error. This is what it's supposed to do. And this is not what we're getting with the, uh, the power stacker. 
So I just don't think that that CPU is going to work with this computer for whatever reason. However, I do not have any other VLB boards in my possession that will take this CPU, or any more VLB boards, period. Well, I might have one, I'm not entirely sure, but that's too much work. So, it's time for phase two of this video, and to show that not all CPU upgrades are for all computers. So enter the Compact Desk Pro 425 IS, which is a computer I really like the design of, but I just don't use it as much as I wish I would, mainly because it's uh, underpowered compared to my other 486. This is a this is an older machine, but it's very well built and where, very well designed. I just like the look of it and everything. And I'm going to install the uh, power stacker in here, and uh, we're going to see what it does. But there are a couple caveats. Right off the bat, after pulling off the 500 pound top cover, you will notice there is no VLB. So in games, having a faster CPU will not um, provide that much of a smoother experience due to the lack of uh, bandwidth between the CPU and the video hardware, which is built in on, onto the motherboard and actually does not use VLB. It's not VESA compatible at all. It does not run since the 2000 because reasons, as I've shown on my other video about this computer. So I'm going to install that CPU and we're going to see what it does. And I'm compare this computer with its original CPU to this CPU. And then I'm going to compare this computer with the uh, new Power Stacker CPU to my AT&T computer as a comparison between a uh, very underpowered or very unbalanced system with uh, older hardware mixed with the newer CPU compared to a more balanced system with a mid-range 486 CPU but with the hardware around it more uh more equipped for the job on a side note another thing i really do like about this computer is that it uses all ps2 so i can use this uh this cherry keyboard here which has the mx blacks and for the nice uh heavy linear keys it uses a uh, two ps2 cables for this built-in mouse right here so it makes for a nice compact little thing to stick on my desk with all the rest of my crap when i'm playing old video games on it so now that I've done my couple little benchmark tests, I'm only going to do like two or three just to get a general idea of the performance difference since I'm going to be uh, using three different computers to or go through three different runs. I don't want to waste all day doing this, but as you can see, the CPU is not mounted in a ZIF socket. It is mounted in a LIF socket, so it's low, inter low insertation force, not zero insertation, uh, insertation force. And another thing about this is that uh, these blanks right here and right here might be the key to the reason why this thing does so poorly in video games. I think this motherboard is just a kind of retrofitted deal for a 486, probably based off of a 386 board because this is, these are blanks for 386 sockets so they could have used the same board for 386 stuff. And since this was designed to be an office machine, I can see why they didn't go for a uh, fast graphics and fast uh fast bus and all this stuff when uh you're gonna be like doing like data sheets or no not data sheets uh spreadsheets and stuff on this kind of machine so anyway what you do to get the cpu out is that you have to take a screwdriver a small flat blade screwdriver here and you got to get underneath the cpu and twist it kind of just pull it up so it is basically just forced into the cpu socket there's no retention system just uh kind of little pins inside there that uh, are receptacles that clamp on to the, uh, the pins in a, a little bit. So you just got to kind of pry up on it. Be very careful. As you can see, it is kind of marred around the edges because I have uh, removed this CPU a couple times. You don't want to bend any pins. Just wiggle it out, and there you go. So um, I'm not sure what that would be or what the equivalent socket would be for this thing. Maybe a socket two or one. I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, as you can see, this does have a little key pin right here. So it'll make it easier to install our new CPU. But all, as always with most CPUs, this little white stripe and uh, cut off edge here. There's a word for that that's not coming to mind right now. Indicates pin one, which is also where the uh, key pin will be. So we just slap it in there. And unfortunately, this thing right here, whoop, excuse the camera bumping. Unfortunately, this thing right here 
This is a uh, guide for the expansion cards. If you're putting a full-length expansion card in the computer, it will slide into these little uh, rails here and support the graphic or the uh, not graphics card, but the expansion card. That gets in the way because this socket is very, on the very edge of the motherboard, so I have to get it out of there, and then I gotta just push it in there, and voila, it is installed. We are now going to operate a fast CPU. <laughs> So the first test I'm going to do is going to be Doom. I'm going to test it in two different configurations. First in this mode with the, the uh, low quality setting and also a lower sized screen so that the uh, slower CPU can cope a little bit. Also this is more like what you would probably be running the settings at anyway to get a higher frame rate when you're actually playing the video game. So using the good old real tick conversion trick that people use, this computer gets 21.62 frames per second with a 33 megahertz CPU at low quality settings. So now this is gameplay footage of the AMD 5X86 P75 at 133 megahertz. And while it is quite a bit faster, it's not quite what you would expect out of a computer that's uh, running at least equivalent to a Pentium 75. A Pentium 75 would be running this quite a bit quicker than this. So using the conversion trick, we get a whopping 32.91 frames per second on this uh, this CPU, which is 1.5 times faster, but the CPU also runs four times faster than the original, so you'd be expecting a little bit higher frame rate than that. So in order to stress things a little bit more, I swapped the game to a higher quality setting and expanded the screen size a little bit, and... The 33 megahertz CPU only gets 11.67 frames per second, while the 133 megahertz CPU gets 16.64, which is another around, you know, 35 to 45 percent increase in speed, which isn't really that good when you're going from 33 megahertz to 133 megahertz. Obviously, the boss is holding the CPU back big time. Up next is the obligatory 3D Bench 2, which uh, once again shows that the CPU is not really running at its full potential. Even though it's not running at its full potential, it's still a good bit faster than the 33 megahertz CPU. It gets a 25.1 frame per second rating, while the uh, 33 megahertz gets a 16.7. And no, I did not freeze the video on the left side. The computer actually crashed after finishing the benchmark. The last of my tests is going to be Tyrion, and I'm not going to do any fancy comparisons or speed tests or anything, because it runs so abysmally on this computer, no matter what CPU you throw in it, it's not even worth it. I mean, just look at this. Anyway, all the settings on this game will be set to normal speed, normal details, and even for a 33 MHz 486, this is pretty bad. So this is the same game with the same settings, but with the 133 MHz CPU, and holy cow, it's just as bad. I'm guessing that this game uses some Visa features or something like that, that this computer's video adapter cannot provide, and it causes extreme slowdown. Either that, or the, the bandwidth needed for the video adapter is uh, not good enough to run this. It's just pretty bad. So the CPU upgrade didn't do so well on that computer, as you could probably tell, and um, unlike that computer, this computer here is more balanced. It ate its vegetables as a kid. It has a 66 megahertz CPU and um, more balanced supporting hardware such as VLB. So we're going to compare the fast CPU on the slow motherboard with uh, this one right here. <laughs> So this is the AT&T486 computer of mine that has the 66 MHz DX2 CPU. And you can tell right off the bat that I have that, uh, that Dream Blaster S2 installed due to the nicer music. And holy cow, it's already way faster. So doing the conversion, this computer gets 38.8 frames per second, while the 133 MHz CPU gets 32.91. That's a whopping 20% increase for a CPU that's half the speed as the other. 
So when you crank up the window size and turn up the graphics detail, this computer gets 21.85 frames per second, while the 133 MHz CPU gets 16.64. So that's a 30% difference on a uh, CPU that's half the speed as the other. So it's really just the bus holding the CPU back big time. The more data you try to push through the bus, the, uh, the bigger the difference is going to become. And for the sake of expediency, I'm going to skip the 3D Bench 2 because you already know what's going to happen with that one. Obviously the 66 MHz wins, so I'm going to go straight to Tyrion and the gameplay speaks for itself. I'm not even going to try and compare numbers or put them side by side or anything because clearly this is just absolutely demolishing the other computer. So as you can see, this slower CPU absolutely curb stomped the AMD 5x86 P75. It just goes to show that not every 486 is created equal, and not every CPU upgrade is right for your computer. So it just uh, you just gotta keep in mind everything around your computer and make the right CPU upgrades for the hardware that you have. If it doesn't make sense, then it's probably not gonna work as well as you'd want it to.